Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined today by Rob Henderson. Hello. And I am Brian Black. Today, we are going to be talking about vehicles. So, we got our first little taste of chilly weather. Yeah, it was so nice. And I uh, thought it would be a good time to kind of talk about what we keep in our vehicles as a way to prepare and. As a caveat, I know this is Texas, and we're nowhere near the northeast, and we don't brace for the kind of weather or winter that you guys have up there. Um, so that's step one on being prepared. Yeah. Is don't live in a place where it snows <laughs> higher than you. Step one, move to Texas. Yeah. Where our rights are great. Yeah, I'm not saying we're perfect. <laughs> it's just it doesn't snow our doors shut. That's true. It does ice, our, yeah. ice us into our houses, but uh, <laughs> you know, other than that. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird anomaly here in Texas. We we get winter sometimes. Last year we did not get a winter whatsoever. So and we're not and, joking at all. Like yeah, zero snow on the like ground. Like end of sixteen into seventeen, <laughs> not even an ice day. So the thing about Texas is when we get bad weather, it's usually ice related, and mm-hmm. it will make driving impossible just because of how slick it gets on you know especially overpasses and things like that. But Anyway, the the uh, the premise of what we want to talk about is things to keep in your vehicle to be prepared for emergencies, and that mm-hmm. doesn't just mean winter weather. That means any kind of emergency that might arise, whether yep. that's a traumatic emergency, whether that's just changing a spare tire, um, whether that's just staying warm when your vehicle breaks down. Mm-hmm. Those that's kind of what we want to talk about today. And I think for me, like the changing of the seasons is the signal for me to change a couple items yep. in what I keep. You know, I don't need a heavy wool blanket during the summer. <laughs> So I'll swap that in. You say that, though, but I keep one in my truck. True. And when we were camping at Muster, I completely forgot a blanket. And I was like, oh, sh- what am I going to do? And then I realized well, there you go. I have a blanket See? in my truck. So yeah. I'll stash a blanket in there and keep yeah. it in there. But I do change out. Like I have shorts uh, in mm-hmm. my extra clothing, which we'll get into. But then I change it for pants because yeah. I don't want to be the guy on the side of the road in an ice <laughs> storm with shorts on. Yeah, I just I keep... A little bit of everything in there because mm-hmm. I have I have a pretty big slider drawer that locks and and it allows me to keep a lot of stuff in there probably more than I need to keep in there but nah yeah the uh, so I don't really rotate stuff other than to check expirables and mm-hmm. things like that so that's more my rotation schedule um, so I always have warm clothing as well as you know warm weather clothing in addition to that so. Meaning that if something happens and I actually have to walk, I've got mm-hmm. that covered. Um, one thing that you should kind of do is think backwards. If you're, if you're trying to plan this out for yourself, what I recommend is taking, taking the scenarios that you might encounter and then work backwards and establish the equipment you might need in those yeah. situations. So, hey, uh, what, if I, what if my car breaks down? Yep. What, what am I going to do? Am I going to walk to a gas station? Do I need a gas can in my truck that's mm-hmm. empty that I can go fill up? Or do I have the ability to carry gas on my roof? Mm-hmm. Should I do that on a regular basis? Um, just kind of working backwards like that. You know, what if your wife's driving your car and she's got a flat tire? Does she know how to change the tire? Absolutely. Does, does she know how to take your huge high lift jack off the truck? Yeah. Or do you have AAA and she can just do, you know. Is there air that. in the spare? Right, exactly. <laughs> so those are all important considerations. And that's that's a little bit of what we'll touch on is the equipment that we've kind of worked out on our own that we need to store based on thinking through those scenarios. Mm-hmm. So I think at the the top of my list is always going to be service on a vehicle. Yeah. And I think a lot of things can be avoided just by yeah. maintaining your vehicle in good working condition, topping off fluids, ensuring everything's in working order. Keep Keeping you know. your fuel tank. Yeah. You know, like you said, like, what if I run out of gas? Well, step one, don't run out of gas. <laughs> yeah. You know, I look at, I start getting kind of, not panicky, but like yeah. I'm getting gas at a quarter tank. Yep. Like that's my bottom line. Yeah, that's so. kind of for me too. Yeah. I, I typically, my thing, my truck's a gas guzzler <laughs> and I pass no less than 12 gas stations on the way to and from work. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's not a big deal for me to just stop and get gas. And I, yep. I don't like to let it get under a half a tank, which, yep. I mean, I get terrible 
fuel consumption. So. It's like at least eighty miles. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's about it's not it's not far off. Um, but so the list of what I would recommend, kind of looking at in terms of general maintenance, is you got you know antifreeze and coolant is a big thing. You want to mm-hmm. make sure that your coolant's at you know in a good position. Um, you should be swapping it like doing a complete coolant change at regular intervals and that's not necessarily every couple months that's whenever your service manual tells you or your dealership or what have you yep um and then i recommend always just keeping all season wiper fluid in there that's that's what i do constantly why not i've learned my lesson over the years i'm just like you know what it's stupid it's like a dollar more a a gallon i'm just gonna buy that no 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 no. i get the summer fluid. yeah (laughs) right yeah i don't have to i don't have to want to have to worry about absolutely Um, and then, you know, making sure your heater and defroster are working and, of course, being in Texas, your AC. Um, that's important. Uh, brakes, make sure they're in working order, uh, as well as brake fluid. That's something that can go out on a vehicle fairly easy. And then you've got, you know, power steering fluid if we're talking fluids. But mm-hmm. um, then lights and signals, making sure that kind of stuff works. Um, keeping your tires aired up, like we mentioned, tire pressure, uh, tread depth, making yep. sure that if you need to get new tires, you get them, um, because you see that stuff all over the highway all the time. Oh yeah, you know, people will just wait to the last minute and then yeah. they'll be driving around on steel belts. Yeah. So, uh, at what intervals do you check for like fluids and signals and stuff like that? I think I try to I try to look under my hood at least once a month. Yeah, and that's. That's probably too long, you know, if, yeah. if I were to, you know, if really sit down and think about how often I really need to check it, I need, I should probably be checking it much yeah. more than that. But I have a, I have a pretty good vehicle. Right. It's got good history. I always maintain it. Yep. So it would be very surprising to me if something did happen. Sure. You know, cause I think that corrosion buildup, even like around a battery can, you know, can pop up in a matter of days, but at the same time, if you're. You know, if you're using good equipment, yeah. If you've got a good battery and you right. know that you're, your the chances are, are slow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I bug Amanda once a month to come out and mm-hmm. watch me step on the brakes and do the turn signals yeah. and stuff. No, it's and, great. You know, yeah. I mean, so that's something I don't do. I probably don't do that enough on turn signals and brakes. And as far as lights go, I don't mm-hmm. check those on a regular basis. I had a uh, 2001 VW Jetta, so yeah. I have a natural okay. paranoia against my <laughs> lights going out. So yeah. Um. And, you know, we mentioned battery and terminal. That's something you want to make sure is maintained, too. And, and clean. Clean, yeah. Yep. Get a get a uh, battery terminal cleaner or a, a brass wire brush mm-hmm. and um, scrape that junk off there. Um, as long as you're not grounded at the same time you're doing it, you're not going to... Yeah, just be careful. Shuck yourself. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to give you advice on... No, no, no battery. advice. Yeah, just yeah. be careful. <laughs> Cautious. Um, oil level is something that's big, too, uh, especially if you've got an oil dripper of a vehicle. Um, you know, and as far as maintenance, that's, re- those are, I feel like kind of the, the bigger yeah. issues that could pop up the things that you want to kind of maintain on a regular basis yourself. It's what's going to keep the vehicle on the road. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're yeah. heated mirrors don't work on the sides, that's not as yeah. big of a deal as like you're leaking transmission fluid all over the road. <laughs> yeah. And obviously being aware of things like, oh, Hey, it's taken a while to start. Maybe that could be an issue. Mm-hmm. I need to take it in for it. And Abnormal noises, yeah. feelings, vibrations. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people hate dealerships, um, but I'm super anal retentive about that stuff. So, like, I've always followed pretty much my, you know, dealer, my whatever you call it. The yeah, manu- the, recommended, the, manu- yeah, yeah. the manual service yeah. interval stuff. And I don't know. The uh, Well, I always thought it was cool when I was younger because I had a – a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and when I bought it, they gave me the service records from mm-hmm. it, and it literally had everything done to yep. it. Like, you know, they the VW shop that did it had, like, little stickers, and, yeah. like, every month was... I've done that, too, and I'm struggling or, yeah. to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and not not that I'm envisioning selling the Jeep, but, like, yeah. I'm, the, I'm, like, keeping the maintenance logs of what kind of oil mm-hmm. they use and all that kind of stuff. Well, the problem is that a lot of dealerships do that stuff now where they're like you need this service right. and it's not even in uh-huh. the, the manual yeah. to do so they just recommend it and like okay dude um so moving on from service obviously that's a big thing and a big yeah. factor um but as far as equipment goes um i would well before we get into hardcore equipment i would keep some fluids in the vehicle like yeah. i try to if i can if i can find the space i try to keep um a, th- a thing of coolant and i try to th- keep a thing of oil 
yeah. in there. Like those are my at two. least a quart. Yeah, I'm not so worried about wiper fluid. That's just in my garage. Yeah. I can you know fill that up when I need. It's to. It's also something you could do by hand. Right. You, know, you could wipe the window down. Yeah. If you needed to, you can't. Yeah. You can't fake oil. True. You could throw some Rain X on your window and probably sure. be okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the first piece of equipment really is I, I would recommend a good set of jumper cables. Yep. And what I mean by that is that in my definition of good set of good jumper cables means that the alligator connectors are copper coated or mm-hmm. or solid copper you want copper that's the big thing um and you want copper wire too that runs through them they're going to be more expensive because you know and thieves, a big gauge. thieves love to steal copper yeah so. yeah four gauge is kind of the you know the the number to hit if you can mm-hmm. get two gauge even better yeah um but yeah i would at least try to get four gauge and you want them at least 12 feet um but depending on how big of a vehicle you have, you may need it up to 20 feet. So I see a lot of guys that do like lift kits and stuff yeah. and they forget like, oh, hey, yep. you're going to have to go a little further with your jumper cables. Well, and the reason being is that you want to be able to jump a car without having to pull a vehicle in front of yours and turn the other direction. Right. Like I want you to be able to pull up behind me in a vehicle and I want to give yep. you this set of jumper cables and you'd be able to go all the way back to your vehicle and, and hook them up. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's an important consideration I think a lot of people neglect. Absolutely. So, yeah. If you're going to spend the money, get a good set. Yeah. And then next would be a really good uh, flashlight and headlamp. You know, I always carry a flashlight and oh, yeah. we've talked about that before. But so. I think headlamp is a great thing because, yeah. I mean, you think about it, you're lifting the hood mm-hmm. and you're in there with your hands. Headlamps yeah. are great for, you know, hands-free yeah. light. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've stuck that flashlight in my mouth and gone, why? Yeah. Yeah. I just need to go grab a headlamp. This is stupid. Yeah, as I'm tasting <laughs> flashlight. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm that guy all the time. And the headlamps aren't that much more expensive yeah. than a flashlight. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to pay like 30 bucks for a good headlamp, toss that in there, and then you don't have to think about it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I'm, I need to just buy another one and put it in the drawer, like the utility drawer at home. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't done that. It, it just, that just kind of clicked. With worst me. case scenario, it's a flashlight. Yeah. Because you hold exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But, and then, you know, like lots of us carry flashlights on a regular basis for EDC, mm-hmm. um, I would highly recommend that Streamlight. Uh, that we've talked about before, the Protac 2L, Mm -hmm. I believe, is the model number. Mm -hmm. It's 250 lumens. It's great for kind of a defensive light, and then obviously it's going to put out enough light to do whatever you need to do. But I have found that certain applications, that light is too bright. Yeah. Have you found that? Yeah, I end up like two fingers over and a tiny little slit (laughs) in my fingers if it's too bright. Yeah. Yeah. The... uh, I was just looking, I shut off the power to look at a outlet the other day Mm -hmm. and I was shining that flashlight inside the outlet and it just blew everything out. Like I couldn't see anything. It's like, oh my God. I think that's a great case for like, I have a Surefire dual mode Mm -hmm. and I don't use it as a defensive light because of the dual mode, but that's a great opportunity. You hit it. I think it's like 15 lumens or something. So it doesn't blind you. Yeah. So maybe something that's not like super defensive oriented that you keep in your car along with a headlamp. Sure. So... Um, and then the next thing is is really kind of the gear you would need to change a flat. And while that sounds pretty self-explanatory because mm-hmm. most vehicles come with that, if you've done any kind of yeah. modification to tires or a lift or anything like that, you're going to need something different. Or just use the manufacturer's one. It's usually yeah. a horrible experience oh, of, of getting the jack to spin correctly. And, oh, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I used to drive around with a small floor jack in one yeah. of my vehicles because I... I don't know why I did. It's not like I changed my tire all the time, but I just you hate, never know. I hated those jacks so much. Yeah. At minimum, you should yeah. have a full tire iron in yeah. there. The four. Yeah. You know, the four the, way, the star, yeah. the star one. Yeah. So it's like a cross. It's got the four different size mm-hmm. lugs on there, four most common sizes. And those are great because you can, you can spin them pretty quickly. I also learned uh, if you get your tires replaced, um, you should, when you pick up the vehicle, you should t- try to take one of them off with the tire iron because uh, they use the so pneumatics. Yeah. So and if they go too hard, you'll never get them off yeah. and you don't know about it. And then six months later when you got to change the tire. You well, that's <laughs> that's actually more reason to get um, either one of those star, I keep calling them stars, that's probably not the right des- description, but um, the four-way cross I yeah, you can put you more this. leverage. Yeah. In, I don't know. Anyway, crisscross tire iron. Yeah, but the other thing you can get is a power wrench from Gorilla. Gorilla something. Oh, okay. Um, and that's like it's an extendable bar. So Gives you more leverage. Yeah, so nice. it kind of creates that leverage with a kind yep. of a breaker bar type nice. aspect. And that's what I keep in my vehicle yeah. rather than the Star one. That's a good. It idea. takes up less space, and um, I have security lugs on them, so I have to have a bit yep. attachment, and that's perfect for that. So. That's awesome. 
Yeah. I also learned uh, loosen the lugs before you jack the vehicle up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you break them first. Yeah. Don't, and j- then you jack, don't jack the vehicle up and then try to break yeah. them. Yeah. Doesn't go well. Yeah, I will preface all that that we just said by learning how to change a tire yeah. first. So if you don't if you don't know how to change a tire or your wife doesn't know how to change a tire or your significant other doesn't know how to change a tire, yeah. please take the time to show them how to do that. Especially if you got kids. Yep. That's a great thing to do. You should you know, know where just, to jack the vehicle up too. Yeah, exactly. I actually I taped yep. off and sprayed uh, with silver spray paint jack points underneath my vehicle. Hmm. That way I don't have to screw that. I can look. That's now, more anal retentive yeah. than I am. If it's covered wow. in mud, you know, I can't really <laughs> see it. But if you shine a light, you'll see the silver spray paint and you can put the jack there. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a good case too to carry a full size spare if you can. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a full size spare and I've I've always been glad that I have that mm-hmm. um, because I don't want to have to worry about, oh, you can only drive 40 miles for Right. This many miles on your and, little donut. Yeah. Right. Well, especially if, if you're like on you, you have a lift and bigger mm-hmm. tires. Uh, like the donut tire that came with it wouldn't work. Right. Um, do you have them rotated in? I ha- I used to do that, but I think I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah. Um, I did that for a long time. I just haven't had them rotated, and I'm due to do that. Mm-hmm. And I've I've. It's funny we're talking about it because I actually have just been thinking about not rotating in the fifth because I I usually do, mm-hmm. um, but. That way, I don't have to buy five tires at a time. Oh, that's a good point. Um, as long as your spare stays in good condition. Right. And and you say that, and it's important to explain, tires are prone to rotting, too, mm-hmm. sometimes. So, but that can take years. Yeah, right. Especially with better tires, you're, you're less likely to run into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, along with changing a tire on the side of the road, signaling comes into play. Yeah. And that's a big thing that most people neglect. You know, you see tons of people on the side of the road all the time doing something to their vehicle yeah. without putting anything down yep. whether that's a, whether that's a true road flare that they sparked up which is perfectly legal to do sure. um, or if it's you know at night like chem lights or some type of reflector or even they make these little triangles that you can set out mm-hmm. that are day glow orange so during the daytime you can see those and then at night they reflect so cuz you don't get to pick when you get a flat yeah um, and as dorky as it sounds, a safety vest is, is kind of, you know, a good thing to do too. Yeah. You know, you can't over prepare to not get hit by a car. True. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's, that's one of the big things. I mean, even police officers run into really dangerous incidences where they, they don't have enough signaling or even with like huge flashing red and blue mm-hmm. lights, people still hit them. So you can't go overboard when it comes to like flares or signals or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I didn't mention is uh, high lift jack, and that's what I carry mm-hmm. um, on my truck. Be, just be one, I have to have one because of the lift. Yeah. Uh, but two, they're just super handy uh, to to use. I mean, I've I've used them from anything from pulling a stake out of the ground yeah. um, to uh, you, you know using as a come along basically during mm-hmm. recovery stuff. Um, you can even the extreme one has this little kind of foot. I guess you call it a foot on the top. And you can reverse it around and use the jack as a jaws of life to spread. Oh, cool! Spread a vehicle. Is that the open. little like brass piece yeah, looking? Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. So I didn't that, know that just basically flips around. So and it can sp- you get a leverage oh, point cool. on the top too. So as you hmm. as you you know basically move that yeah. the piece with the, the high. Oh, that's jack. cool. Yeah. But anyway, there's a, it's pretty versatile. Um, and they're uh, honestly they're relatively cheap. Yeah, I think they're like a hundred bucks or something. And I have yeah. I think mine's like a freaking four foot one or 60 inch or something like that it's super big that makes sense <laughs> yeah mine's pretty big <laughs> but uh you don't have to get that extreme with them you can get the smaller ones that yeah. could fit in a trunk or something like that so it's just a good tool to have if you can if you have the space for it tons of mounting options if you've got a off-road vehicle too don't mount it on the roof or the uh, hood <laughs> i can't i see that all the time on especially jeeps don't mount it across the hood you get in a car accident it's coming through the windshield <laughs> Yeah, if it comes off. Well, yeah, yeah, if it's mounted probably, but I'm just saying, don't yeah. test fate. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And then toolkit for repairs is a big one on the list, too. Yeah. Um, you know, at least having the basics like a socket set, a pair of pliers, yep. a couple of screwdrivers. Don't just um, rely on wrenches. a multi-tool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and multi-tool is great to have as well. Yeah. Um, so is a knife. Yep. Um, preferably one you could use that's got a ferro rod with it and start a fire (laughs) so things like that are great to have too um but yeah i'd uh i definitely recommend a toolkit of some kind probably throw some electrical tape in there maybe some duct tape 
I found a really good tool roll. It's like a canvas, yeah. and yeah. you just stick them all in there, and then you roll it up, and it's about, I don't know, six, eight inches mm-hmm. in diameter. That's great to keep yeah, all and sorts then, of full-size stuff. Yeah, I agree. I like tool rolls a lot. There's kind of something nostalgic about it is, yeah. a tool roll, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I kind of... I kind of lean towards all the recovery side, which is, you know, mm-hmm. more than most people carry. But I mean, I've got, I've got a lot of recovery equipment in my vehicle. <laughs> At this know. point, you're going to start a service. Yeah. You basically can't. it's probably about a hundred pounds worth of equipment in mm-hmm. a kit bag. And that's kind of what it equals out to. So I've got, you know, a chain to use for recovery stuff. I've got, um, a snatch strap. I've got a couple of uh, tree straps. And you know, the brand on yours? Is it Pro Comp? Yes, it is Pro okay. Comp. Yeah, because they make some crappy recovery straps mm-hmm. out there, and I know Pro Comps are some of the best. They've well, got you, the leather ends. Yeah, and... you want you want ones that are properly rated. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can't remember the you know the poundage yeah. offhand, but yeah, you want rated straps. That's yep. a big thing. Um, and then I have you know shackles and things like that that mm-hmm. I use. There's uh, what do you call those? Um, snatch blocks yes thank you yeah so snatch blocks i have a couple of those too um basically to increase the the leverage or the uh what do you call it the um the another word yeah i can't can't remember (laughs) something like that it's math yeah yeah um it's because science says it's not leverage it's the other word (laughs) it's the other kind of friction no no. um you're multiplying everyone's yelling at me at home it's like a pulley thing sorry yeah, yeah. It's, you know aristotle yeah. would know the word <laughs> but uh that, that kind of interacts with my winch so basically i'm increasing that whatever word yeah um, something that i didn't know i was gonna see if you had do you have a line dampener yeah uh-huh. okay yeah that's important too. i had just seen that the other day i was watching like a recovery's gone wrong oh yeah and that's i think another great thing is if you don't just buy the equipment know how to use yes. it because some of that stuff's real dangerous yeah and i've taken a couple of classes on how to use that stuff um overland expo is a great way to take some training classes they've got that overland expo experience that they do mm-hmm. and you can jump in on some classes and learn recovery techniques and proper ways to rig up everything it's great experience um but that's uh that's a very important part too yeah. and you know i have recovered a couple of people and people have tried to tell me what to do and it's and and i get it sure. like i i understand that everybody has their ways of doing things but it's like your truck's stuck. I'm right. going to use my equipment yep. the way that I feel is the safest way to yep. use it, and you need to get out of the way. Absolutely. <laughs> or before you get hit with a wire yeah. that gets broken. That and steel com- cable doesn't care yeah, what's in its way. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing that yeah. scares me the most. And, I mean, I get in my vehicle and kind of yeah. hide behind my steering wheel while I'm wheeling in that <laughs> winch down. because, yeah, I mean, I do not want that thing coming through my windshield yeah. if it snaps. But, but that's – Proper yeah. recovery gear. Yeah, and I do use a line that. dampener, and yep. that's that will help mitigate yep. that. It won't it won't prevent it no, from no. happening, but this it will be one extra step. Yes, agreed. Um, but you know, moving on from that stuff, fire extinguisher is something important that you should have in your vehicle as well. It's the most basic um, thing. Yeah, I caught a bunch of crap a couple years ago when I posted an article because I had a kind of a dinky fire extinguisher, which I've since <laughs> upgraded to a more proper fire extinguisher. It's not a full size one, but it's but at big least, enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you want something that's rated, you know, ABC at least, um, mm-hmm. something that does all three type of fires. You don't, you want to be able to do electrical and wood and um, I forget the other one. Uh, like chemical? Chemical, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which your vehicle, I mean, it doesn't have wood most of the time, but it will have electrical yeah. and chemical guaranteed. Yep. Yeah. And that's not a nice thing to find out that your fire extinguisher yeah. doesn't do. I just... I never want to roll up on a fire and think, oh, right. shit, I don't have the right kind of fire extinguisher. Yeah, if they make yeah. a fire extinguisher that covers yeah. all the bases, why yeah. would you ever buy anything different? I agree. Um, and then, you know, jumping back to signaling a little bit too, mm-hmm. um, radios come into play. So yep. emergency communications are huge. Yep. Whether that's even having the proper charging equipment to charge your cell phone oh. in an emergency, mm-hmm. even if your vehicle didn't work, you know, do you have everything you need to jump into somebody else's and do that? Uh, meaning, like, if you use a USB because your car has a USB port, do you have the adapter to plug into a cigarette lighter, yep. a 12-volt adapter, if you had to charge it in another person's vehicle? So mm-hmm. all that stuff is important to think about, too. Um, and then radios, you know, being able to run those as well. Yeah. Um, so We've talked about ham and stuff before. Yeah, the ham. What to keep or yeah, CB, CB whether, I mean, whatever. Yeah, whether it's yeah. CB radio, whether it's a ham radio, whether it's a handheld running, yep. you know, mirrors or some kind of emergencies channel. Yep. Um, it's important as well. And then backup food and water, 
and fuel, really. I mean, we yep. kind of covered fuel and carrying that already, but you know, just having calories mm -hmm. to eat if you're stranded is is a huge deal too. Yep. Um, and that goes it, something just popped into mind too is that it, yes, it's great to carry all this stuff, but if you had to leave your vehicle. Um, having a spare backpack that doesn't have anything in it that you could just toss what you need in Absolutely. it is a great plan too. Yep. So, and you know, having a pair of boots and proper socks to mm -hmm. be able to hike out if if that if that happens because you can't just plan on hunkering down. Right. You know, you may need to move to get to yeah. a road. I mean, if you careen off the road, yeah, you know. it's always better to stay put. Um, mm -hmm. Just like that one instance that happened to the uh, the Asian couple that got stranded during the winter because they got lost. That's right. It was, it was multiple years ago now. Um, but remember, because they wandered off. Yeah. Right? So yep. he, I mean, they needed heat so bad they were burning tires off the car. Jeez. And he decided to go for help, and he wound up dying from mm. you know the elements. Yep. And they wound up getting rescued because they stayed with the car, but they could never find him, or it yeah. took them a while to find him. Uh, but yeah, it's just tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that goes back to we talked about you know having the proper clothing too, um, because if you know probably if that would have happened and he had the proper clothing, mm -hmm. he would have survived out there in the elements. Yep. So, you know. The exposure can get you. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, and we talked about having a knife and tools and things like that, but even like a rescue tool is a great thing. So the ability to smash a window um, with one of those little rescue hammers or something like a seatbelt cutter. Yep, all those are important. Seatbelt cutter is huge. Yeah, to think about because when those when those devices lock up, they're locked. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not. Yeah, and then kind of last, um, but really not last in the position wise of importance is, you know, first aid and trauma equipment. Yep. Um, you know, whether that's to treat yourself or whether that's to treat somebody you come upon as a, you know, a first responder to a situation, mm -hmm. you know, even having, uh, boo-boo kit supplies, you know, yeah. like band-aids and bandages or, you know, something that's going to help tremendously in yeah. that situation. When we talk about like the most likely things to happen for a vehicle yeah. accident is number yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So, whether that's to you or right just somebody or somebody else. you see, yeah. I mean, I would uh, coming upon an accident where you could have done something, you just don't have the equipment. Like you have the space, you might yeah. as well have a kit there that can handle it. Agreed. Yeah, and then again with you know medical stuff comes training too. You know, there's um, there's definitely a uh, you know laws to protect you know civilians in that mm -hmm. case, but at the same time, you know, the more prepared with training you are, yeah. the, the better you're going to. It doesn't fare. mean you should use those laws. You yeah. should still know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of kind of where to at least start the journey of what to put in the vehicle. Um, we're always open to suggestions, too. Yeah. I, I love talking about this because I, I keep thinking about things. We'll get a comment talking, or something like, yeah. oh, man, that's a yeah, good yeah. point. Yeah. Um, there's more stuff to keep in my vehicle. Yeah, yeah gas mileage is going down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we will uh, post some links in the episode intel because we've written some articles about these kind of topics too so you can get some ideas on uh, what we recommend on the exact equipment for these things that we talked about too so hope you enjoyed it thanks for listening to gear tasting radio remember to check the episode into as we said we'll post some links there and if you're enjoying gear tasting radio use the pound tag gear tasting on any social media network and we will eventually answer some questions here it's been a while since we had a question episode but we will it get happens. to them trust me and if you're enjoying what we're doing, head over to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, review us. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you think of the podcast. And if again, if you like what we're doing, another thing really that we, like it. if you really, really yeah. like it, head over to patreon.com slash ITS Tactical. We've got some rewards for our patrons over there to allow us to give you back something in return for your support and your dollars. Thanks for listening.